we're going to ask a few of our artists uh, who use sketchbooks in really different ways, like Sarah Haviland, Robin Glassman, Laura Rosen, Barbara Swanson, and Lori Fredette. And after that, we hope to have a few minutes for a general discussion. And I would just like to ask any of you who see that you use sketchbooks in a different way uh, to join the discussion. And if you have a, an example around, you'll be able to hold yours up too. So we have just about a half hour for the whole thing. So um, I'd really like uh, us to get started. I, I can start just by telling you that I've been using sketchbooks since the late eighties when I was spending weekends in the Catskills and going hiking every weekend. And that lasted for maybe 20 years. Uh, and what I did was keep a sketchbook, a small one, you know, just um, something that could fit in my backpack. And uh, I kept the sketchbook and a little scripto mechanical pencil and a tiny little watercolor kit and some aquarel crayons. And they just lived there. I had a double of everything. So I, they just stayed there. And I used them while we were hiking, while we would stop for, stop to rest. I would sit down and I would do a little drawing of wherever we were uh, in the woods near a stream on a rock, whatever. And then when we get to the top of wherever we were climbing, I would do more. So this was kind of a record that I kept. And I've more or less kept this practice and it's become more and more part of my whole art practice since then. Uh, when I would go on a trip, <clears throat> whether it was Cuba or Europe, or if I would go for a day at the beach, I always had a little sketchbook in my purse. And I keep different things for different places. <coughs> Excuse me, <clears throat> it's morning. Uh, I'll keep a very small sketch pad uh, in my, in my um, purse or my, you know, my, my shoulder bag so that if ever I have to stop, wait in the doctor's office, wait for the subway, um, have dinner with somebody uh, or do anything where I didn't expect to sketch, but it was a nice time to do it. I would just pull out a little four by six, which is inconspicuous and you can use pencil, pen, you know, anything quick and keep a nice record. And when I go to someplace where I know I'm going to sketch, I'll take something slightly larger. Uh, and for that, I would use my four by five, um, I'm sorry, five by seven kind of pad uh, with the same as my, my backpack outfit you know, a little bit of uh, supplies with me, but not to take up much room. And I found that five by seven is not too small, but it's not too big, it's not conspicuous. Also I used, uh, and then for times when I know that I'm gonna be sketching in a place where I have a little bit more room, I might go up to, um, this is eight by, uh, what is this? It's not five by eight, I think this one is uh, seven by 10. And this was comfortable and I went up to this size when I would do things every week at the Jazz Foundation, working fast, so was, but I had a little space. I had a little more elbow room. I had an extra folding chair to keep my watercolors or my other supplies. So it, it all depends on the situation, but I, I just really feel that um, it's become more and more important to me as I record. It's become a record of where I've been and what I've done and what I'm interested in. And it's also, in a way become the basis for a lot of my larger studio work. There's a difference in style. I don't do large watercolors or large ink or large pencil, but I, I do large, you know, large drawings in oil stick or I paint in oil or in acrylic. But my sketchbooks have really provided me with a, a, a real idea of what I'm, I'm, I'm interested in working on at the moment. So, um, I'd like to pass on now since we really don't have a lot of time. Uh, and if you, unless anybody has a specific questions, you know, maybe we can just do this for later. Yeah. Uh, so next, uh, let's see, who did I say was next? Oh, Sarah, Sarah Haviland, are you around? Can you just show a few more pictures of yours while we find All her? Right. Well, this is what I'm doing now when I go to my dog park, that's my, my year of COVID where I'll, I'll, I go to the dog park and I'm kind of teaching myself, you know, to draw dogs uh, and they're adorable <laughs> and they don't stay still either. So 
that's uh, that's in a little five by seven size. And um, this is a six by eight. This is what I would take and carry uh, and sit sit near a stream or a waterfall or something and do a quick sketch. They're all they're all quick sketches. They're not long term. I use a, a sketch pad that's at least 80 pound so that it can take a, a watercolor rendering or ink, pen and ink or any medium, uh, as long as I don't count on it as a, a you know, a heavy duty finish piece. But I always use um, a spiral because it's easy to take out. I might, might want to make a, a greeting card out of one or a birthday card, or I might want to mat it. Uh, I had a, a show with, you know, a hundred of these, well, one size, they were all nice five by sevens and they were matted and mounted uh, 11 by 14. Um, and I, I had a hundred pieces in a show and that was, it's terrific when they're all the same, uh, same size because, you know, it's, there's a consistency, it's much easier to show things that way. So that's another thing to think about is, you know, if you're going to use it to show, you know, you want to keep them more, it's easier if they're similar. Um, okay, Sarah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Go. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Regina. I'm, I love your jazz pieces, especially. Okay. I've been following you. Okay. Um, I'm just going to share that, you know, I also have a whole series from years of making, uh, using my sketchbooks. And I'm going to say right off that I have one book, which is my journal. <laughs> it's always tries to be my red and black um, Chinese notebook, which is for the verbal part of my need in my studio and in my life. And so that's separate. I'm not, I don't consider it a sketchbook, but I always, um, I've separated my, my brain into the part where I just need to write for thing about things in my life. And that's for this notebook, which I have a whole series of, and some of that is in the studio. And I would say is about, um, talking to myself about what's going on and what my project needs and where I'm stuck. And then sometimes rationalizing why I have to do something or what's next. So that's the verbal part, which is ongoing. And then there's the, the visual and note-taking part. And um, my, my drawings that I consider more finished drawings don't go into these sketchbooks, but this is my carry around. Um, you can see beat, beaten up um, black notebook that I used to get at Pearl and now I get online. Um, and I, I end up labeling them with dates and they become um, what I really think of like a, a treasure house of my ideas. A lot of it, a lot of it is not very beautiful to look at, um, but I do use it in lots of different ways. So in the studio, I always have it with me and there will be the occasional just, you know, I need to make a drawing, I need to use some color and I'm observing something in my life. Um, that's it, that I just have to respond. Um, sometimes, most often it's in pen, however, and most often it's kind of very practical. So I'll just show you a few pages of those where I am writing, um, you know, making, making sketches of ideas. And I'm, a lot of it is things that may happen and things that never happen. But for that reason, um, I return to them. And my, you know, some of these I'm tabbing for today, but I have tabs all over them <laughs> because they're ideas to return to or sketches that I thought ca captured something that I'm going to return to. And so when I'm working towards a new project, I will go back and look at a few of the older ones for to, if I'm responding to a, a particular project, which happens in sculpture a lot, you know, come up with a proposal for something and I'll go back to my, you know, recurring ideas, the things that haven't gone away. And um, so I will have various things, uh, sketches, think notes that end up on other tabs that get put in. Here's another just drawing of snow day um, that I put into a sketchbook. But very often they look more like this. And this is, this is the technical part of sculpture. And you're gonna see um, things that I'm working out about armature inside the sculpture notes that I have to write to myself, even like steps, one, two, three, do this, do this, <laughs> following steps, because there's a lot of um, practical aspects. Um, and then I'll write, I actually usually only sketch and make notes on the right side. And then the left side of my page becomes extra notes. Oh, here's like a floor plan for a show. 
other ideas like that. And um, often the left side becomes a place where I'm gonna write in quotes um, that are interesting or relevant to my work or are about titles because I'm looking for poems, I'm looking for titles. And so I end up, let me find a page that shows that. Um, there are other like single pages that I think that's just an idea and I'm using an ink brush um, or I'm working on something that became a sculpture. And yet on the left side, these are potential titles that I'm working, <clears throat> that I'm thinking about. And then I come back and when I have recurring themes in my work, which I do because so many of them are about birds and mythology, I'll go and look for the sections of poems that I've written in on the left side and the um, the titles, the potential titles and which one works for a sculpture and, and what's next. That's and great. so yeah. nice. we have to uh, wrap up and-, and Okay, okay. That, that, I, I'm looking at the clock and I'm getting nervous. <laughs> one last thing, other notebooks become used for other kinds of sketches. Uh -huh. Travels, sketches uh -huh. when I was in Taiwan, so. Great, thank you, Sarah. Thanks great. so much. Uh, Robin, are you, are you there and ready to? to show us, Robin Glassman? Yes. I, okay, to... uh, I think you wanted to share it and do it on a, I'm gonna a share, share screen. <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't count on my own. Okay, I guess I'll have to read it. No, we can see it. Do you want us to read it for you? Yeah. Can you? Yes. Could you? Because I, I have, I've audioed it, but it doesn't let me do it. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, if you can read it. Okay. My sketchbook journey is 1982 to the present. Since the pandemic, I've filled eight books just drawing and recording my daily activities, journaling and doodling drawing while engaging in Jewish spiritual practices, drawing while my husband reads aloud Ulysses and much more. Recently, the last three months, my sketchbook has been much more therapeutic, working towards emotional wellness so I can once again engage in life more fully. When I used to be out and about, my sketchbook was a travel log and always with me. Now at home, these books illustrate more directly the passing of time. They show me where I've been this last year. And lately I've been reflecting on the spiritual and creative activities which have sustained me through the first eight months of lockdown. It's comforting to see myself in a full spectrum of emotional, physical, spiritual states. That's what being human is about. I'm happy to share, uh, be able to share my humanness with you. Oh, lovely. Really lovely. Here's an example of one way I used my sketchbook to help me get through a challenging time. In 2018, I underwent 25 days of radiation for a back of the throat cancer. The following entries show my drawing process that fully engaged me through this time and beyond. I've always let life dictate my drawings, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on what is happening. Oh, wow. Day eight. <laughs> and this was after it was done. Just the whole idea of drawing, just mm. to draw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is very typical of what my drawings are like when I'm just drawing and <clears throat> I can't get out of this now. What? 
These next few drawings are part of another countdown process, this time both global and also personal. At the second night of Passover, there is a practice of using the Kabbalistic counting the Omer for 49 days until we reach another holiday called Shavuot. Five years ago, when very sick, I was first introduced to the counting of the Omer. Every year since I've engaged in this Jewish spiritual practice, it's been a way to honor my existence and remind me of how far I've come. Last year, with the extra time and intention, I translated each day into a drawing a day. Enjoy. Good Abby. Wow. Wow. So these are ink drawings. They are wonderful. Wow. Ooh. This is the final day. Beautiful. And I've actually played with this one. I had to get out. Larger. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Robin, for sharing that with us. Um, in, because we're really short on time, we're going to move on. But your work is really very moving. And, and it's a wonderful way to use a sketchbook. Um, it's very and can you, can you, Robin, or somebody else put the link that you had on one of the slides, the Wikipedia, yeah. in, the, uh, in the chat, please? Thanks so much. Okay, thank you. Okay, Great. then we're going to move on to, um, to Laura Rosen. For, Laura, it's going to have to be quick, I'm afraid. Okay. So. <laughs> I, I, I will be quick. Okay, I've I worked sketchbooks my entire adult life from college on, so I have tons of them. And are you able to hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so I mostly well, I'm sketch. On, I'm in there. Um, I there I somebody some mute themselves or we're, we're we're working on it. Oh, okay. Um, oh shoot. I'm sorry, Laura. I muted you by mistake. <laughs> Unmute yourself. Okay. So New York is my subject, and I've been filling sketchbooks for decades. And for me, they are the end product. It's it's what I love to do. It's very personal, and it's I don't use sketchbooks for sketches for larger projects. I do them just for themselves. And I'll quickly just show you some of what I do. Um, this one is up in the Bronx. It's the Van Cortlandt Manor. Oh, I work mm -hmm. very small. It's hard to tell how small this is, but it's it's small. Um, I work in watercolor and micron pen. Uh, sometimes I work in black and white on toned paper. This is about as big as I get. This is a Greenwood Cemetery. Uh, sometimes I work in, in just washes. This is Concrete Park in the Bronx. And this last one I'll show you is of the Gowanus Canal in Brooklyn. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, I, I don't carry a sketchbook around with me all the time. I, I go out a few times a week, often with the New York City Urban Sketchers. It's great to have company when you're sketching sometimes. Um, and I go very light. I have a small watercolor palette. I have the Micron pens. The largest thing I have is a, a folding stool that comes down to about this size. And I can just grab it and go. Um, the downside, somebody else mentioned this, is sketchbooks, particularly like these watercolor ones that I showed you, if you want to frame something, you'll probably have to cut it up or else make a shadow box with the book open. Or I show them in vitrines when I do show them. During the pandemic, I haven't been out that much. I've, I've gotten over being uncomfortable with people breathing down my neck and watching me. But during COVID, I haven't wanted them to breathe down my neck. But um, later today will be my first day back out this spring. Uh, to do some sketching. So I'm, I'm all fully vaccinated, so I'm ready to go. So that's, that's all. <laughs> that's great, thank you. Wow. <laughs> really, really good. Okay, uh, and we'll move on to Barbara Sherman. 
who has her own way of using sketchbooks. Are you there, Barbara? Yes, here I am. Here Hi. Um, thank you. Um, I started making, and I think I've stretched the boundaries of sketchbookness, but um, I started making these books when a teacher looked at my work and said he saw diligence, but it wasn't art. Um, and I, I did cry a little bit, but I didn't quit. I, I, got a, I got one of these blank books and I just said, the heck with it. I'm just gonna do something that's just for me. I'm not gonna do anything nice to appeal to anybody else. This is totally for me. And I started with um, Leonardo da Vinci's dying words, which were, if I could, if I, and that was it for him. And then I just started, I started making collages and cutting things out and finding images that I like and then writing down any notes that I had. Now here I did, this is Lady Cecily Heron, a drawing by um, Holbein. And I put her right with Georgia O'Keeffe because I think they kind of, they struck me as being um, similar. And then I just started really playing and I'm just gonna open these up randomly. Make, cutting out, um, I would just go tearing through magazines and the newspapers and anything I saw just randomly. Uh, and then I eventually went back to that class and the teacher, I mean, I was kept going to class all the time. The teacher looked at it and said, well, this is a playground for you. And I thought, well, that actually is really exactly what it was. I kept up my diligent drawings. Then I started doing this to my date books. Like here's um, February 14th, the week of February 14th. I decided to make my life beautiful. And then here's another page. Um, just, and as I look back on them, they're a wonderful resource. I often, pick, uh, you know, put in something that I might want to draw, but I can't do it now. Here's my collection. I'm now on book 23. And there they are up on a shelf. <laughs> and um, so it's been wonderful for me. It's, uh, and going back, I can get another idea. I also write, um, according to Julia Cameron and the artist way, I write three pages every morning, but that's in one of those black and white composition books. Yeah, I do yeah, it while I'm yeah. still lying in bed. Yeah. Three pages that's total nonsense, you know, just keep your hand moving, keep your hand moving. A journal. And that's yeah. it. Thank you for inviting me. Well, thank you, Barbara. This was really interesting. Okay, well, um, and one more. We'll, we'll have time for one more quick one, and I hope we'll be able to talk a little after. This one is going to be Lori, Lori Fredette. Whoops. Uh, Fran, you have, you have her. I um, thought I Instagram. did, but. Who did yeah. something with her Instagram uh, feed using her sketchbooks. Okay, Lori is sharing the screen, so. Great, hi, Lori. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm going to try to be really fast, so excuse the rapid um, expression. So I received an award um, to fund a passion project and it's called at spaces for thinking you'll find it on Instagram um, because I find myself wondering how we gather and hold the intangible um, and those to me are the sketchbooks and notebooks and journals that we all use to pursue wonder. I'm going to jump right through uh, to come up to the pro actual project that I'm working on which is this. <clears throat> So I'm focusing on 13 artists right now in the Hudson Valley. This is Ian Matchell. Um, I thought I'd share with you some specific ways that the artists that I've been talking to are using their sketchbooks. So Ian, um, for a long time, didn't have a studio and he dubbed his sketchbook as his studio and he would go sit in a coffee shop for two to four hours, have coffee, bagel and cream cheese, and he would create in the sketchbook as he would if he were in his studio. So he worked out his ideas, he would make cut lists, um, places even where he could show, um, show his sculpture. Um, this is Amy Toludo. Amy carries a pocket size sketchbook and it commutes with her every day and it functions as a placemaker for her. And Amy told me that every single thing that's going on in her brain lands on these pages. 
This is Beth Humphrey, and um, Beth loads up her sketch. This I found really fascinating. Beth has sketchbooks every place in her house. There's not just one in the living room. There are three in the living room. There are two in the bedroom. There's one in the bathroom because she wants to have access to a sketchbook at any given moment. And that practice started when she was raising children and um, just would take, um, use it when the kids might be off playing with um, some toy and she would capture five minutes to have a sketchbook moment. This is Katie Grove. Um, Katie um, spent a year traveling and she used her sketchbook as a journal and as, um, and as a sketchbook. So it was a really a reflective part of capturing um, her experience on the road. And she would spend every evening in front of a campfire capturing her day. Um, and the last artist I wanna show you is Kate Collier. Kate is a printmaker and what you're seeing are the drawdowns um, from her spatula when she's testing her ink. So not only is she capturing a record of what is actually going into her print, she's holding on to all of the ideas that she had with regards to color. So I think what everybody has touched upon in talking about sketchbooks here is that a sketchbook is observational, it is reflective, um, it is creative and it acts as a journal because we're all just trying to capture those moments that we don't want to forget. Well, beautiful, thank you, Lori. Um, I, it's 11 o'clock, Fran. I don't know whether we, um, I mean, I don't know whether we can continue uh, to open this up for a few minutes. If anybody has anything pressing, Fran, you're muted. Oh, thank you. Okay, great. So um, let's see. I think that what, okay. I think perhaps um, we can um, say goodbye to anyone who needs to leave promptly at 11. It is 11. You know, when we're in a physical space and we're renting the room, we have to leave on time because someone else is coming in to use the room. But here on Zoom, we could go on forever. We really can't because we have a steering committee okay. meeting after this, <laughs> but, um, but we could go on for five or 10 minutes. But we could go on for five or 10 yeah. minutes. So if you can stay, please stay because we'd love to hear thoughts, questions, comments, and what, I Eileen, can we take like another 10 minutes or something? I think Is 10 that? minutes. I yeah. think 10 minutes and then we need yeah. to- Back to you, you're okay. running this. thank you. <laughs> oh, no, you're so welcome. Thank you to Regina, to Sarah, to Robin, Laura, Barbara, and Lori for these presentations that were excellent. Um, Let's just open it right up to comments and questions. Just jump in if you have a thought that you'd like to share. Uh, I just want to say next time I like to share. <laughs> yes, or if you have a sketchbook that you'd like to share. Um, Marianne Barcelona, are you there? Do you want to jump right in? Here she goes. Okay, unmute yourself. Okay, um, I always, always carry a toothbrush holder. Today I don't have it with me. This is the only day I haven't had it in six months but I keep a pen and a brush, this and a little crow quill pen and a little, a little um, bottle of ink and something. And in the subways, I would use, I can't use a bottle of ink in a dip pen, but I would use a pilot pen, but I would do uh, blind contour drawings of people so that they don't realize that I'm Doing that. Are you going to show us? Yeah, Hold I it up am. so we can I see. I took one apart. So anyway, can you, can you see that? Yeah. Yes. Great. Okay, here's another one. Hmm. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. While you're showing them, can I just say that I did a little quick demo workshop with Marianne on sketchbooks. And hmm. the first thing she had us do was to take our materials and make a big mess. That was her instruction on the first page. Everyone was like, I don't wanna mess up my book. And she said, right. no, you have to do, the first thing you have to do is make it messy because that's what it's all about. We, right. we wanna be uninhibited in our sketchbooks. Right. And I love that. Thank you. <laughs> and then I have this, I like landscape books. So I've been using them lately. And when I get crazy, I just need to draw something. So I have plants around that I draw with the dip pen. Mm -hmm. uh, and I use black and brown ink and graphite and mix them. 
Mm, nice. So just whatever I'm, oh, and this one, I did a collage. I did a, I started gluing things on. I carry a little glue stick with me too. So I would tear a page out of the back of the, the book and make shapes that I could put on to create forms. And then the last thing was when I went to Iceland, I had a book that I kept going afterwards, but this was, I carried. Oh, wow, that's really nice. Yeah, I carried a little a little set of gouache. Gouache, gorgeous. And there's another one I did. Mm, that was great. Thank you. And then I did some other things. This is in Canada. Mm, very nice. Wow, I love that. And I do, I do write a lot. I have something like fifty-six notebooks. Uh, this is, this is fifty-five, I think, uh, which is mostly written. But every once in a while, I lose it. This was the day of the impeachment, <laughs> <laughs> and I was stabbing. I was. I never do this, but I was. I was so anxious and so angry at some of the testimonies. <laughs> Terrific. That I, this is unusual for me. That's Usually amazing. It's just, That's it's really just amazing. I mean, you're <laughs> really catching, it. you're catching so much of what we all feel and do. And, and I, I just love the way your book combines all of these different things. I mean, I think the biggest thing is, you know, like what everybody is saying, you know, it's, it's, it's a way of, 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 it's a playground or it's a, it's a journal. It's, it's us, and I think that's what's so great about them. It's so personal. Barbara you know? Alman got me to change it. Usually I was keeping the words completely separate from the drawings. And I talked with Barbara, she puts everything in one book. And I started doing that. And it's interesting because uh, it does make it harder for me to look back and find things. But on the other hand, it is a record in time of where yeah. I was, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, everything, including including um, issues I was trying to work through emotionally and a webinar that I wanted to have notes on and it's all by date. So uh, I'm starting to think that that's a good system. And I Wonderful. always have the book with me, always, always. Really, that's great. A anyone else, we have five, four minutes. Anyone else want to yes. jump in? I want to. Pearl, Pearl, yeah. yes, Pearl, jump in. Okay, this is your solution for only having two hands, okay? This, <laughs> this oh is God. this is my little um one of my little sketchbooks this is gouache this is my formerly celestial tea boxes remember those little boxes you used yeah, to get yeah. so that's how oops that's how little it is and so the problem is holding it <laughs> so in the back and so everything the trick here is everything has to be metal Wait, we can't we can't see it the Pull back. it back towards you and up oh, a little bit. There we go. So there oh. are magnets on the back. Oh. And that's what holds it. And over here is a, a metal tin. Water. I have a magnet for that too. Okay. And this is my little gouache set. Some of my paint fell out. <laughs> Demonstrating. And this is my little gouache set. That's and there you go. Fantastic. And you switch it when you go to a new pad. For a new yeah, page. it's just a new page. Magnets. It's magnets. Yeah, it's new pages. It gets one thick page at a time. If you only do one page at a time, it works. You know, will it work it's... through the whole book if you get to the last page? Well, no. Yeah. You what you do is you just go. You just move it to a page behind it. That's right. right. Oh. The earth, it's the earth magnets, right, Pearl? The earth magnets it's are really strong ones. Wrong. Mm. Only yeah, the earth you magnets. On Amazon now, I have the little powerful ones. And I got these bigger ones, and this is what I oh, did. It's was not I, attached. This is sets of magnets on each side. This is Hold it in the middle. We point. can't see it. Hold can't it by it. the dot. Hold it by the video now, dot. In front so of your this, face. This is a piece of plastic in the middle, and then there's then so the two magnets are on each side of the plastic, and then there's um uh scotch tape separating them because you got to really be careful with these magnets because they want to jump together 
And then, you know, you can put them anywhere in the book behind a page. Oh. And, and then, but use, use, bring an extra piece of paper so that if it's touching a drawing, you know, you're not going to get it messed up. <laughs> so there you right. go. Your solution to only having two hands. That's great. <laughs> okay, let me call on you again for a demonstration, a personal demonstration. I have to try that. Wow. Well, yeah, that works great. That is great. Thank you, Pearl. And I just have to say that um, like the photography presentation that we're going to have coming up, we may yeah. need to do another Maybe special do thing. Yeah. Just yeah. sketchbooks. This is so fun. <laughs> I want to see all of your sketchbooks. Just like, I don't know about other, everyone here, but to me, it's like candy. It's like going to a candy store, getting to see other artists' yeah. sketchbooks. It's yeah. like mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah amazing um oh, I can't uh, one yeah. more minute anyone have a very quick oh, thing they'd Frank, like to share i was just i was and just gonna say I, one thing one I, thing yes yvette go ahead one thing that i love about sketchbooks it's like there's no ego involved there this is just a personal yeah, thing sure. you're not thinking it's gonna you're gonna do a finished piece you're gonna give it to anyone show anyone it's just for you so it's like no ego which is great Make a difference i yeah, love that fresh, and real fresh i love that I just want to ask you. have Catherine. a gallery view of everybody holding up their sketchbooks. <laughs> it's a good oh idea. Oh my God. Where is mine? I love your I don't I'm have gonna go get mine. Yeah. Go, uh, quick, quick go about your sketchbook. And then making a um a you know a snap, a snap of it. Also, I just wanted to answer um Catherine's question about how to get sketchbooks to be translated into later works. And um, there's two ways that I've done it since I've been in the printing industry. And that is to either scan them professionally if you have to bring them somewhere, but also to have a really good photograph, a really, really good photograph of the sketchbook page that you're doing. So. Any case. Somebody want to take a snapshot if we put them, if everybody holds them up, a screenshot? All right, I'm going to do some screenshots. Okay, so keep holding it up because I have to go from uh, page to page. So everybody hold them up. Oh, those are wonderful. I'm just going to do one more uh, of everyone. So keep holding up your sketchbooks if you have them. And cool. Awesome. All right, I, I got have to say that I love the writing. To me, I mean, you, I use I do have that in my work, but to me, just the pages of writing is art. Like just everyone's handwriting. It's it's yeah, I don't know, it's very expressive and satisfying to me. That was great. That was great. Wow. Cool. cool. Can't wait it's to fabulous. Yeah. Look at the photo and zoom in on each one. Yeah. And, uh, and what about Liz Quizgard, right? With her. Oh, with her yeah. oh my God. And the Liz has hundreds of sketchbooks. Her mm, sketchbooks hundreds. are going to the right. Smithsonian Institution. They <laughs> are taking them all into their wow. 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 That's a whole history of New York art there. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, really yeah, it's, true. it's really true. Wow. Mm. Wow. Okay. Well, we could go on that? all day, but yeah. we, have we have to. Um, we have to. Uh, we have to yeah, we have a steering yeah. yeah. committee. We have. Um, a, how is Liz? Do we have a link for that meeting. Has anyone been in touch with Liz in the last few months? I, I, she and I, uh, she and I speak all the time. She, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, Lothoriel, tell us about her. She calls me all the time, once a week or so. She's slowing down, meaning that she's uh, she's weaker. She doesn't have as much energy physically. She does not go out because of the pandemic, but she's vaccinated. Um, but she she doesn't have a lot of energy for walking, so she doesn't go out very often. She has all her food delivered, and she goes to the doctors and things like that. But she's great. She is working round the clock, never stopping, only working. Good. Amazing. Liz, Liz, tell Liz, her we love her, okay? Yeah, oh, tell, tell her we love her. Oh, Liz, yes. Last name? She's great. Quizgard. Quizgard. Liz yeah. Quizgard. Uh, Liz Quizgard is one of, one of the very early 
first members of the New York Artist Circle. And she's, she's in her 90s. And 91. she is only 91. Only 91. Yeah. But a huge inspiration to all of us. Yeah. And some years ago, because she had a huge amount of artwork and she didn't want it to end up in a dumpster somewhere, she started a project of um, approaching institutions that she felt were worthy of having her work and offering to donate her work to these institutions, museums and art uh, college galleries and museums like that. Um, and she has placed most of her work from all throughout her history into these amazing, and as a result, she's been offered solo shows mm -hmm. and she's been offered catalogs and talks yeah, and yeah, uh, when when she could they flew her around the country it's but what's so incredible to me is that as she is okay as she's doing this trying to get rid of her work uh, rid of uh <laughs> trying to place oh, yeah. her work yeah and 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 to give it a home because she's been offered these shows, she said, well, I can't show old work. I have to make new work. So she's been feverishly creating more work than probably she even had before. And so she's.